Welcome everybody to Red Dirt Catholics. Um, I'm Jace, your host with Alex Sanchez and Rhonda. We're super excited to have you. Rhonda McMillan, who's the director of HR for the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City. Woo-woo. Thanks for thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was it was Super Bowl it was Super Bowl Sunday. I looked up a stat um, uh, that twenty four point five billion dollars were wagered. Wow. On the Super Bowl this year, how how much of that did you contribute? I did not. Con- <laughs> I contributed actually zero um, into that explicit pool. Um, that but explicit I was at I was at I was at my best. It was like a Super Bowl slash my best friend's going away party. Uh-huh. So we had it, we had all the guys over. It was super fun. And uh, but wa- looking at the prop bets for the Super Bowl is actually really funny. Just the, the <laughs> ridiculous amount of things that you can bet on. Like there was an over under on like how long the national anthem was going to be over or under what? ninety point really? five seconds and stuff. I was wondering how much of that was actually on football and not something like that's how funny. many there was there, sightings or something. Yeah, oh, no, really? there is one. Oh, there, there, the over under was what? eight. We were counting. You know, so so we looked up all the lines and we all guessed, but we like nobody yeah. put any money on anything. Um but yeah that one was that actually went under the the Taylor Swift one as far as I understood. Wow. Um and then the the one that everyone got oh the gosh. most hyped about was the Star Spangled Banner because I think it was the first one. But Reba Reba hit Reba hit the over of going over ninety. I'm nodding seconds. like I know what over under means. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. just yeah. knowing like that it was more than ninety one sec more than ninety one seconds uh, or under ninety one oh, seconds. Oh, give, mm-hmm. give or take. Yeah. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, wow. So they set the lines, but that was interesting. What it mm. what was what was the. You were you were just telling me that your 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 paying mm. attention to football has waned. Yeah. Um. In the in the advent of your fantasy loss in the playoffs. Yeah. Ever since I lost to someone who I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that loss. But <laughs> um. Yeah. I just I I shifted gears and my my um thoughtless scrolling has has gone elsewhere. <laughs> so, uh. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't follow it. I had fa- like friends and family like, hey, who are you cheering for? And I was like. I literally forgot. I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? It? Like, <laughs> just in life or, oh, it's your boy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was totally unplugged. But that, that is funny to hear. Like there's a game within a game with like Taylor Swift stuff mm-hmm. and the anthem. Oh, that's yeah. just, that's, that's wild. Mm-hmm. But, it's it's super funny. I really, the I always like the food yeah. with it. Um, for ours, we went, we went full blown. We had like six different trays of wings from Buffalo Wild Wings. Wow. Um, pigs in a blanket. Pigs in a, pigs in a blanket. <laughs> Walk. Um, no quok, but ah. queso. Oh yeah. Um, we had like stuffed bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. Nice. Um, it was like it's the best. It was it was the best. I'm not a I've I've never eaten particularly healthy. Um, <laughs> shocker for everyone, but uh, man, it was like the best food. So good. What I did. Do, I what did do actually you like eating at the Super Bowl? Well, I was gonna say the the thing that I've appreciated. I don't know, maybe the most, but maybe this year, I, I just watched a few of the videos on the halftime show, and it was just like reminiscent of the past. All of these big hits from, you know, like the late '90s, early 2000s, and yeah, that was funny to see, like all of that. Um, mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I always wondered, like, how they get, how they choose, like, the halftime show, because it's always like people like 15, 20 years past That's their prime. Yes. It's so weird. I don't know if they book it 20 years in advance or what. They probably have to reach a wide range yeah. of ages and yeah, yeah so they have to find someone that's been around for a while mm-hmm. maybe this year i, I, I appreciate it who they don't had. pay you for your services really doing the halftime show at the super bowl because they they they, they would state that the publicity that you get like Whoa. the amount of streams um, that usher's song got after that mm-hmm. will more than pay for mm-hmm. Yeah, so it got you, me. you do it. You do it for free. I wonder if they pay for the show for the cost of putting I, it on. I, 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 have, I have, every says that they do. Um, Get ahead, so, Nadia. Whoa. Uh, so that's something. all. That's all really interesting. I, I, the halftime show. I was like, I could have taken it or leave it in. <gasps> um, Edit that out, Avery. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I only knew um, one song, but that um, one song I've heard. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it was fine. I really liked my favorite one in the last like five years was Shakira. Don't say Black Eyed Peas. Okay. <laughs> that one was terrible. <laughs> that one was absolutely terrible. Yeah. But Usher on Roller Skates was interesting looking. Yeah, that's cool. For sure. <laughs> um, and so I really, I really enjoyed that. But I was rooting for the 49ers. I wanted them to pull through. I was tired of the Chiefs. 
I'm mm. tired of him. Mm. Um, I had a friend of mine uh, when I asked him who he was rooting for. Um, this is a this is a full grown man, and he just said, "I just want Taylor to be happy." <laughs> okay. <laughs> That sounds like kind funny. of the dialogue in my house, except That's my funny. husband wanted the 49ers to win for exactly those reasons you said. Yeah. And That's I wanted hilarious. the Chiefs to win because how awful would that have been for all of the Swifties <laughs> if it wouldn't have happened? The poor so Swifties. Funny. They would have been so upset. That is so funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, that whole that whole thing, I have loved the the cultural impact that that <laughs> that couple has made over the last the new six fan months. base <laughs> yeah the new fan base like all the all of the talking about it I I've been here for it I find that I find that fascinating mm-hmm. it's funny. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah let's go ahead and get started with a prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen. come Holy Spirit thank you so much for for Rhonda and this opportunity to have this great conversation on how to have difficult conversations. Lord, I pray that you will enter and pierce the heart um, of our of our listeners and of our very selves um, as we have this conversation and move us closer to you and help this conversation result in the salvation of souls um, and be able to have us bring people closer to the church in evangelization. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So difficult conversations i like stab my thumb um (laughs) difficult conversations Mm -hmm. you haven't always been in hr you want to give us just like Mm -hmm. the briefest of backstories of like how you ended up where you are now what how i became to be a human resource how did you become Rhonda (laughs) and neon lights in the pastoral center (laughs) the star I didn't go to school for human resources. I have a, a business administration degree. So there, you know, we learned about organizational um, mm-hmm. things, but not necessarily specific to HR. Mm-hmm. I had a career as a trainer, software trainer, back before I was a stay-at-home mom for several years. Yeah. And I did a lot of HR Things, and but, but you were telling us like back in the nineties. I just think this is fascinating. Yes. Like you were teaching people how to like double click. Yes, it was a different time, time. Or to right click. Yes, and you know, this is, well, I can remember classes where people would sit at the their computer, pick up the mouse, and put it on the screen and try to oh, maneuver oh. on this. It was a. It was. Oh my gosh, I felt <clears throat> really smart because <laughs> <laughs> I knew how to do the basic wow, things. I do too right now. <laughs> yes. Teaching people how to wow. send an email. It was it was very new at the time to have a home computer. <laughs> and now it's just something that we barely feel like we have to throw on a resume because it's assumed it is, that you've used yes. a computer. Yeah. Yes, you almost don't or at least even a mouse, ask yeah. the question. Um, so then I, I think... I did a lot of HR related tasks in that in that job when I got into management in that role. And after I was home for a while and went back to the workforce, my first job was in human resources. And uh, it mm. was a good fit. I really enjoyed being a part of setting kind of the vibe of the of the place and and the environment and and seeing if there was anywhere, anyone that needed extra encouragement or maybe just some help in being more successful in what mm. they're doing. I That's my favorite part of it. And, and, it, and it was in construction. It was in construction. Right? Mm-hmm. So like, is this with like the good old boys it, who are absolutely hopping and going up and down ladders and yes. are swinging things? <laughs> yes, like, I And I'm it. sure, was there like, when I was in oil, there was like a, a, diff, a, a difference in culture between those that were in the office doing like administration or the engineers <laughs> and the guys that were living out on the rig. Like, so there had to have been, like, I would lo- I, you have to have a great story of like <laughs> the difference between the two um, and, and, and meeting them where they are. You know, interestingly, we, the people in the office, they all had gone to a project, a construction management school. Most of them are from OSU, by the way. And, um, they were, they, I think they were in the roles they were in because they were able to relate mm. with people in the office and people out in the mm. field. Mm. I know um, probably a big difference. Um, we had a Christmas party once and Ooh, it the was of worlds. so fun. The meeting of worlds. <laughs> and to see how 
comfortable and casual and and willing the guys from out in the field were in just having fun and not mm. really being concerned about being as professional as they right. as they felt that that they they ought to be or someone else thought they should be that um i think that it set a really great tone for everybody else at the party too a mm. lot of us who may not be as as um able to let loose You're right. did yeah. i'm not one of those people i can <laughs> I can let loose, but <laughs> um, my name is Rhonda, and I like to party. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh! It was fun. It was a good start to oh. HR for sure. Yeah, that, and that's awesome. And then, and then, and then, and then, over the years, you ended up here at the Archdiocese I did. of Oklahoma City. I did. I spent some time um, working for a security guard services company. That expanded and in included an environmental health and safety company with um, occupational drug and alcohol testing mm. and the federal government. I worked for Department of Interior for a while. So I've had some varying yeah. experiences. Whoa. And um, this is so very different in the best way. Huh. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And you and we ask this question in our interviews all the time of like, what do you think working for the church would be like? But you've mm -hmm. gotten to do both sectors in HR. Mm -hmm. Has there been a, a large difference because it's churchy stuff, or has it just been it's just people? You know, I would say uh, there are differences, and the differences are that united, just foundation that we all have, the, our united purpose and interest that we have, mm -hmm. in why we're here, why we have these jobs, because. We, with our skill sets, a lot of us could be doing the same type of work in other industries, for lack of a better word, but we yeah. all choose to be here because we want to do more than just yeah. do work. And that is the best, the best feeling. In in all those positions, did did uh, difficult conversations kind of follow you throughout? You know, every field and things like that. It, it didn't really depend on the work. She doesn't right? have any more <laughs> just there. Ones. Just Not there. in the church. <laughs> it certainly has. And another surprising thing might be that the mediation discussions. Hmm. I I have more now. Now that I work oh, for the church. Interesting. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because more people care enough to say something and want to make it right, or if it's just um, the nature of our community. We're, we're not just coworkers that sit next to each other by day and then go home and live separate lives in mm -hmm. the evening. Sometimes we're working with someone who might, we might have kids in the same school, or we might sure. be parishioners at the same church. So I think relationships are so much more dynamic and the need to work through problems mm. is probably more important and that's why mm. i do a lot more of those types of difficult conversations Gosh. so over the course of your time i think you've had so many like it, it has to get to a point where you almost categorize them mm -hmm. in, a, in a way of like the different types of i'm gonna have a mediation or i'm gonna have this kind do you is, or is there like a top four of like the types of conversations that you end up having I would say um, mediation is is the most frequent, definitely. Hmm. Uh, and, and what does that mean exactly? It's it's usually related to two individuals, sometimes more, maybe a group, maybe a team that's not functioning well together because they've they've stopped um, supporting each other hmm. and not so much sabotaging each other, but maybe. Um, you you don't thrive as well when you don't when when you don't feel like somebody has your back. If right. you feel like um, somebody's kind of looking for ways to to point out your errors, or um, it, it can be it can be really a, a, a big struggle. So mm -hmm. I will meet with usually each person separately just to find out in their own words and with the freedom mm -hmm. to be able to speak openly what they think is going on. And um, once I've had a chance to talk with them separately, depending on where everybody is, I might have to do that again and kind of take some wow. of the information that, I, that I've received as Elsewhere. a whole and then come back and revisit with all of them and hopefully 
that's the only time and then we can wow. we can meet together as a group and work through things that's that like way. a whole subset of skills within difficult conversations is <clears throat> not just you having them but then being the facilitator between two mm -hmm. people who need to have them because mm -hmm. there's so many um skills that you'd have to like have or, or learn to be able to to have that so mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean mm -hmm. personally i'm very excited to have this conversation because <laughs> i think difficult conversations um are just really intriguing to me and mm -hmm. we will always have them whether we want to or not mm -hmm. um but it, it doesn't mean just because it's difficult that it has to go poorly so yeah i'm it's excited so to to learn some of these things and, and i don't know if you have any other thoughts with jace's question with um are there other kind of typical ones that you see or typical patterns or i would say um there are difficult conversations related to uh changes that need to happen mm -hmm. whether it's related to <clears throat> someone's performance or the way they're interacting in yeah. the office or um, even changes that aren't related to just an individual, but maybe it's uh, the in, the work environment or work structure is changing. And anytime there's change, that can be mm -hmm. difficult because change is hard and a lot of people uh, are hesitant. So that's where it, it's really it's really important how you approach the the conversation, what words you choose, and and the tone that you set. You yeah. want to you want to be enthusiastic and positive, so that they also understand that that change doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a bad thing. It can be a great thing, mm -hmm. and it's okay to feel uh, worried or hesitant. But in the long run, it can be good. I'm glad that you said um, a moment ago that. It's their skills that have to be learned yeah. because that is so true. It's I, I said before we started talking that um, it's really an, an amazing thing that I might be someone here talking with you about having difficult conversations because mm. certainly back as you know a young person, a teenager, or, or I grew up in a, in a house full of sisters, so you can imagine <laughs> that <laughs> when there were some conversations that didn't always go so smoothly, but. Um, you, it just takes practice. You you mm -hmm. you work at it. And one of my favorite sayings about communication skills is that it's not um, it's not practice makes perfect ever because we'll never be perfect at it. It's you know practice makes better, and the more you practice, the better yeah. you get. Yeah, I think it's interesting with like a difficult conversation. Like uh, like so often, there's no preparing. In, a, in, certain, in some ways, especially like for the first ones that you have, you know, mm -hmm. they, they can come out of nowhere. And there's just this this sense of, and we even talked about it when we were talking about like the the intense needs of the human individual, like to be understood and to be, right. and to be loved and mm -hmm. all of that. And if you're in your first difficult conversation, you don't feel that, mm -hmm. that forms you mm -hmm. and uh, to what your expectations are and your brain starts to shift into specific modes like where like the adrenaline goes high oh, yes. um, and you become not yourself mm -hmm. in a way you become a dumber more reactive version mm -hmm. so it's just like um so it's, it's just a fascinating mm -hmm. thing that you you have to you live in that space you absolutely you know it's like to. at a like like i'm thinking of the hurt locker you know like the hurt locker is this movie is this movie about um about guys who were removing landmines in, in mm -hmm. Iraq during yeah. the Iraq war. And like when you're coming into these crucial conversations, Rhonda's kind of in that way. She's like got the bodysuit on. She's There's like, landmines somewhere. Yep. She's doing yeah. her doing her right. best because like it just and it's not anybody's fault yep. even, mm -hmm. which makes it even like the yeah, the stakes mm -hmm. are so high. Mm -hmm. Like how do you I so I assume one of the skills associated with that is like keeping it cool and collected or like oh, so yes. how do we, how do you even begin to develop that i what you said a moment ago about making someone feel um i i think you said uh, heard or mm -hmm. or um that, that that their value that they're important i think that is the key piece to mm. um <clears throat> having the conversation go on a better path not a, not always a great path but a better path and hmm. i think the word is is empathy and empathy is another one of those things that maybe isn't natural for everyone but i think we can get better at it with practice but um so i know some of us probably do have the good skill of thinking about 
what some how we might want to be told something or how we might sure. want to be um, how we might want to receive some information. So we'll adapt and do it that way, which is definitely a good start. But it's also not exactly empathy mm. because <clears throat> we're still thinking about our own experience and assuming or, or, or going about it as though the other person is yeah. going to have that same experience. Mm. So if what I try to do is uh, get into that per other person's sh shoes and and their their mind and their their ears, their their you know their heart. What what are they what are they hearing? Mm. How is this impacting them? And with that empathy, I can do my best to try to navigate through the words that I choose or the tone that I use. Yeah. Um, and always it, it try to, I, I try to make it about the behaviors or the, um, the, mm. the issue, whatever it is, and not about the person. Not the character. Yeah. I, I, if, if I can end a conversation that where I had to share some bad news with someone and they feel maybe they have, they still have some dignity and still mm. feel some some value because the, everybody has contributed value in some way even even if it was they right. were only there for a short time and whatever happened was major <laughs> they still have there's something that mm. you can you can say to someone to make it um make it less yeah. less hurtful with, with that do you feel like you more approach difficult conversations with Kind of setting the tone and and you kind of setting the yeah the the pace the the tone of conversation the um maybe where you're going to go how you're going to address it or do you find yourself more matching what the other person's kind of outputting that is such a good question and both of those things are so important and kind of a mystery sometimes because right it's like ebb and flow uh, it, what what the i i help um, around the archdiocese. So sometimes I'll meet with people that I've never met before. Mm -hmm. So I won't know I mean, really how to prepare. Cold. Yes, yeah. exactly. I won't know how to do what I just described. So I'll I'll come prepared usually with a set of talking points depending on what the situation is. If it's a mediation or something mm. where I know why I'm going. That way I can... Um, keep things on topic and I can look at how things are worded, how I'm going to say it so that I don't get anybody hung up on the first item because mm. I said it mm. a certain way and now they can't think about right. anything else because <clears throat> they're, they interpreted that to be a certain yeah. way. Yeah, knowing the content yes. of the conversation that needs to be had. Yes, and then adjusting. Mm. As as eas as as much as I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, do you have any? Um, I don't know. I I just I have my brain's going so many different ways. <laughs> but do you have um, maybe some examples that come to mind with with what this looks like? To okay, I have some I have some general talking points. Um, I want to go into this and set a tone for a mm -hmm. conversation. Uh, maybe I have said something that the person interprets in a different way, and maybe I need to backpedal, empathize, match where they're at, and then and then move forward or adapt. Or I don't know. Do you have um, a conversation like that that comes to mind um, mm -hmm. for you? I would say I have one um, that was very recent, actually, and it was. Um, I think there. Were, I think the only word I can think of to describe it is there was probably some tension, hmm. but not really um, something that could be connected to, to any reason. So the conversation was um, just creating an awareness, just saying, I, I've noticed that that whenever we meet or we, we um, were discussing anything, there seems to be an immediate um, vibe of there being there being tension. Yeah. So through that conversation and just coming in with I think the other the other main word besides humility, I would I mean besides empathy is humility because hmm. we're not wanting to do what's best for for us and our our interests. It's for um for everyone's and also for the Lord's. We I, we hmm. started with a prayer here. Hmm. 
anytime I go for oops, anytime I go for one of these uh, uh, different types of, of difficult conversations, I pray on the way there. We start with a prayer. There have been times where right in the middle of the conversation, I'll be listening and I and I can sense that things are going a certain way, and I'll say a, a prayer to myself, and and that that reminds me that this is not about me or even the other person. This is about what what the Lord wants for us and the work that we're doing and the way that we're interacting with each other. Mm. Um, you had asked, um, I, I think I might have gotten off topic just then of what you just asked me, no, but good. it was it was about adjusting and, um, oh, the conversation that I had. Right. <laughs> I'm back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think just having that, that, that thought, that spirit of this is this is not a right or wrong. We're not trying. This is you know not a dodgeball game. We're not trying to mm. like knock each other out and only one winner. This is about finding a true resolution so we can work well together. And during yeah. that conversation, some things came out that were not even related to us. It was hmm. all about just um, assumptions and and past experiences and. It all it all ended up working out really well. I think that that phrase that, that you said just keeps going over and over in my mind of like I've noticed I've noticed that blank like I've noticed that there's tension when we talk about this I've noticed mm -hmm. something and I and I think I'm just kind of piecing some of the stuff you're saying together like you don't attribute some of the like you don't attribute negative behavior or whatever to like character. Um, and that even comes out in the way that you phrase things. Like you're not a, you're not assigning meaning to anything. You're mm -hmm. like I, I've noticed that there's tension. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're an argumentative person, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying mm -hmm. that you're like a divisive person. Mm -hmm. But I, I've I've noticed that when we're in these situations, that there seems to be some tension, mm -hmm. and that this seems like a very like kind of curious, mm -hmm. kind of like humble. Like I'm I'm interested to to know if you see that if you mm -hmm. see that too, and help me make sense of that. Mm -hmm. um, that's just really good. It, it just feels real like slow moving. You know, and but with that outlook of, I, I'm not trying to prove you wrong. I'm not trying to make you That's, see the air of your yeah. ways, but seeing if there's a way to to mm -hmm. move forward together or to mm -hmm. help help us relate in a better way. And being open to the fact that I might be wrong, mm. that um, this is what I'm sensing, but. This is our chance to talk to see if maybe maybe that's not even the way that it really is, and then even better because yeah. <laughs> that was an even better, even easier conversation. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, so what else goes into the preparation for you as you're as you're coming as you're heading into a maybe maybe this is one you know that it could it doesn't even have to be like within HR you know it could be with like a child or a spouse or mm -hmm. you know whatever what else what else goes through your brain as mm. you're preparing. Um, for that? It would definitely be um, thinking about the conversation, what the topic is. And and if it's something that is, I would say, uh, I don't want to call it bad news, but um, something that is not what the other person is expecting. And it might come as a shock to them. I will design my questions a certain way because the last thing that I want to do is put someone in the hot seat for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want someone to feel instantly tense and worried because they're meeting with HR because that mm -hmm. has a connotation to it. So, um, so I'll, I'll go in depending on what the situation is prepared to start it off with the right tone. I also don't want to give somebody false a false sense of you know security or relief if, if it truly is a, a serious matter. Sure. So I'll be I'll prepare that way. I'll, I'll mm. usually have my my kind of opening for lack of a better got word. the opening line yeah in. my opening statement um, to try to set the tone and sometimes that is acknowledging that this is this is going to be a difficult conversation Whoa. and saying um saying i i you know or something like um i have i have some disappointing news mm. or or I that's very clear though yeah, yeah. that way yeah. that way you you're not giving anyone um you don't you don't want to make someone feel 
in that you're trying to dupe them or that you're not sincere right. that yeah. you're not taking it as seriously as you know they're going to mm. so I, I work on that for sure it's really good setting that tone before I ever have yeah. that conversation mm. Mm -hmm. that absolutely makes sense how do you feel that the role of like I like how Alex just kind of mentioned clarity mm -hmm. um in that and that and, and that strikes me as something that the more clear you can be in the way mm -hmm. that you're and clear and empathetic you know there's like probably a balance like you can probably say something a little bit too clearly and yeah, I think it comes and, off as blunt yeah whatever, blunt or yeah. rude or whatever it is mm -hmm. um but i i was wondering if I, I as you were talking about that i was like i bet you that opening line isn't like paragraphs long or it, yeah. or anything like that 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 there's that probably the people who are best at having these difficult conversations mm. have a shorter, hmm. like, thesis, Absolutely. as it were, to the conversation. And I wondered if, like, brevity was really important within that. Absolutely, well, because I think that the goal most of the time is to listen, to hear mm. what the other person has to say. Because a lot of the time, you're meeting with them to allow them a chance to respond to whatever it is, whatever the concern or the issue is. Mm. And if that's the purpose, then there shouldn't be a lot of talking that I'm doing or the other person who's having that, you know, who's initiated that discussion mm. is doing, but allowing that person their their time. And Which is so hard when you come in with oh, your list of things that you want is. to point out, right? <laughs> yes. Like, oh, first is, you know, you did this, second you did this, but to come with the listening approach is Absolutely. really, really difficult. And and yeah. another thing that comes probably with practice is being comfortable with silence because a lot of the time you'll you'll be waiting for the person to collect their thoughts and, and that's okay. I think... Um, Mm -hmm. A lot comes from those times. More, I, I would say that after a, a sh brief period of silence, um, more truth comes out than than in other times when someone is is really quick to respond. And it's mm. um, it, it's it's not wow. an easy it's not an easy few moments or a few seconds to, to allow that to happen, mm -hmm. but it's really important. So you probably even yeah. encourage people to take their time. Absolutely, in, yes. In mm -hmm. responding in some of those ways. Mm -hmm. And that's not normal. Like when I'm thinking, like I'm thinking of like, if I'm in a job interview or something like that, mm -hmm. like our natural thought is like, be quick oh, on get, your feet. And be be <laughs> yes. quick, figure it out. Like don't, don't take two minutes to come up with the answer to each question. Otherwise mm -hmm. I'm going to, they're going to think I'm slow with it or mm -hmm. whatever it is. But, that's almost a skill. It is. For the person who's taking their time for a moment, for it them is. too, because they have to be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. huh. And even them being able to say, could I, like, could I have a second mm -hmm. to, to collect my thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're so Man, right. I, I, I noticed that when someone in an, in an interview, if when they really take a moment to, to hear the question, to truly mm. think about what it's asking and not – immediately answering of course sometimes you just know because maybe you were anticipating the question and you already had your answer ready and all of that is is great but i think someone who really does give it some thought is Man. is is very good you know so your 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 question and also what you were bringing up about um like the opening phrase there's there's one phrase that sticks out like in my life as I look back on difficult conversations and it all happened when I was on the receiving end. And then I, I took that same phrase as like, wow, this is something that's really clear and empathetic. And the phrase was um, like, hey, can I can I be honest with you about something? Mm -hmm. And that's that was a, that was kind of what it was. And like whether it was like, you know, something that you did like hurt me or I felt like um, this or that. But like that phrase of, hey, can I can I be honest with you about something? And uh, I remember years, years ago, uh, it stuck with me, like a good difficult conversation stuck with me, but it was a friend of mine from, from Focus. And this is funny situation where um, we were together and, and he was asking like, hey, do you want to get dinner tonight? And we were in, in Florida for the training. And I was like, yeah, man, that sounds great. And about 30 minutes later, there was another dad uh, that came up and, and I was still with my buddy, Kenny at the time. And Another dad came up and was like, hey, man, like there's a whole bunch of us dads are going to go to the uh, the pub and, and hang out and then we're going to go do this and that. I'm like, would you want to come? I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. When? He's like, tonight. He's like, perfect. I'll be there. And uh, 
and I totally like forgot that I had just committed to, to my friend that was next to me. And as we were, we were walking and talking, he was like, he said, Hey, hey Alex, can I, can I be honest with you about something? Um, he's like, normally like it wouldn't be a big deal. Like if you wanted to do something else and committed to something else, but, but because I want to help you be a man of your word, I, I want to ask you to stay committed to this first thing that you committed to me and to spend, to spend the time, uh, like the evening with me. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, so taken aback about like mm-hmm. the, the clarity mm-hmm. and also the, the honesty. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you're, you're right. And I just can't say the other thing. And it was, but it was, it, it was like, um, such a good redirect mm-hmm. and such a clear, like he wasn't coming from a place of like, what the heck, man, mm-hmm. you know, what's, what's your problem? How'd you forget? And like all this kind of stuff. It was so like, Hey, can I, can I talk with you about something? Can I be honest with you? And so I think these difficult conversations, like we could, we could be afraid of them. Like even like as leaders talking to people that we lead or family members or friends or whatever, but when they go well, like they can really be so impactful years down the road. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Probably more impactful than like really, really easy yeah. conversations and like mm-hmm. road times like like I you read in a ton, yeah. a ton of marriage books like you know your fights and how you fight is what really builds intimacy mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. you know within a marriage mm-hmm. and like um in, in any relationship like the ability to move past something that's difficult mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like trust has to grow mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exponentially the right. ability to communicate his needs, his what what he needed from you, mm-hmm. and his expectations. That's a word that I use a lot in different presentations that I do. Is expectations. Mm-hmm. We don't know that we're disappointing someone or mm-hmm. hurting someone's feelings if they haven't shared what they what they expect from us. And that sounds yeah. like exactly what your friend did. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had a I had a question. Did you have something? No, I, I'll say um, that. Uh, I was thinking about what you were saying with the conversations that you can have, and there's a lot of listening involved, Mm -hmm. and that we want to just put ourselves in their mind. But sometimes what makes the conversations difficult is that they don't know um, how they're feeling or about a particular thing or what their opinion is on something, Mm -hmm. but something something is off, Mm -hmm. and there can be something off and you know it's hard to put words to it so you have to almost go into a diagnostic mm-hmm. mode and i was curious if you had any like particular questions that if you're in that place that you would ask mm-hmm. that like disarms and helps people understand themselves you know and can shine light in those areas of mystery when when stakes are high mm-hmm. i if someone is having a hard time expressing themselves, I will ask them if there's anything about what I've read to them or what I've said to them that maybe doesn't doesn't sound the way that they remember. Hmm. Just a, just some, maybe maybe a hmm. question that will they'll be able to answer. Maybe yeah. not have to come up with the full response on their own, but be able to at least respond to to a portion of it. So go, going from more wide, what is the problem, man? Mm-hmm. To <laughs> essentially, about this. Yeah. Or, how do you feel about this thing? Yes. Oh, oh we feel good. <laughs> this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I, it's really yeah. like just like just deep like mm-hmm. increase, um, In- incrementally almost. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. like incrementally, just like shuffle it through mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and checking your own wording to see if like what the way you've yeah. asked something is like a stumbling block for the person or there's a, there's like a language issue or yes there's um another thing that i hmm. that i say in these presentations that i do about communication i call it the pause and it's it's really it, it can it can change everything if you just hmm. allow yourself a few seconds, be okay with awkwardness if it if it takes you know longer than what seems natural to find the best word or to adjust and and find the the best tone, because um, there's that that 
ripple effect, you know, that that um, that butterfly effect where we choose this word, Ooh, they yeah. hear that, Ooh. and that's what they they I latch latching. on to, mm. and then they don't hear anything else besides that one word, oh, yeah. and then their response is in response to that particular choice of words. So allowing yourself just those few seconds even to really find the the right word, even if it's not grammatically correct or you make up your own word that's close, you know, um, you can say, I felt kind of uncomfortable-ish, you know, I mean, that's that's a way of saying something Mm. that might be less uh, alarming or put somebody on the defense than to say, um, I, I felt really uncomfortable by this. You know, just yeah. it, there's just, just a way of, of finding, mm. taking a pause to find the right word, the right way to say it. It's mm. good. It's good. I was thinking about a, I, I guess where my where my head goes is so difficult conversations. So, yeah, as as a leader, needing to have difficult conversations with people. Um, for various reasons, whether maybe you have mediation, maybe there's a change. Um, but I guess, are there some uh, are there some pitfalls that you feel like uh, can be avoided when it comes to difficult conversations? Maybe when you're either initiating them or maybe on the receiving end, but I, you know, like I've found when you do X, Y, or Z, if I say something, if I do, you know, something mm-hmm. or, um, are there are there pitfalls that you feel like you've noticed in difficult conversations when things tend to go poorly mm-hmm. that can be avoided? I um, what I mentioned earlier about the need to be right. I think that is mm. where a lot of um, challenges happen. Where yeah. a lot of uh, of the the any kind of success that might come out of a difficult conversation is is really jeopardized because then it becomes not about mm. making people. exactly yeah. not about people not about what's best but being the oh. one that's right prevails that prevails and um that's that's something where i think i i, I joked about yeah. how i'm surprised that you know all these years later i might actually be somebody who can offer some suggestions about this because yeah. that's probably that that's probably been my my biggest obstacle mm. is being able to go into a conversation and having it just be about making everything better and not coming out as the one who was right or said yeah. it the best way or had the the lowest blow or you know or whatever mm. it is so yeah yeah mm-hmm. the feeling of the need to win, the competitive nature that come out, which is like a kind of a primal thing, you know, mm-hmm. survival thing. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense that that piece of the brain can be triggered when mm-hmm. you're when you're in a, uh, a mm-hmm. high stakes conversation. You mentioned earlier, Jace, about how people can actually have a physical right. reaction to difficult conversations. And um, that's something else that I think I have learned those can be major pitfalls when you see someone kind of lock up because of the stress of the of right. that kind yeah, of adrenaline fight or flight happening. So um, I that is something that I I have I've learned I probably just over having experienced it so many times I, I am able to recognize a little sooner yeah. and and navigate that. A little better and and put them at ease yeah mm-hmm. there's a lot of um just like similarities that like what i'm hearing with like even like with counseling too like there's the, a lot of similar ways of of relating um just like things that i would try to focus on or or take into consideration or notice about the other person um but i was going to say um what was it <laughs> what could it be what could it be? It's counseling. It's it's just right there. Well, while 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 we go through the deep recesses, uh, <laughs> get lost Sanchez, in there, get lost. It's you valleys. know what a great place to be. You know, it's like a national park, really. Uh, it's a great uh, I, had, I I I had something. Um, or I think about, I was wondering if there's like if you have a greatest hits track of of a story of like a massive success. 
when it comes to a crucial conversation that just like went well and you could like give us some context within mm-hmm. that and like sh- even maybe highlight some of these principles that we've discussed in those and how they were executed and then maybe one that just like went off the rails okay for mm. you know for fun and like highlight like mm-hmm. the things that you know maybe this was before you uh mm-hmm. garnered your experience and you were you were trying to win or whatever it was <laughs> um i find that stories and applying them within there would be a really cool idea and that's i know it's put on you put you on the spot a little bit i thought of one as we were talking about the physical response yeah. um it, i i started thinking about one that happened it's been many years ago but um it was a the subject matter may have been just about the most difficult subject matter mm. that i've had to meet with someone to talk about um and it can also be complicated by knowing someone. You've known this person mm. for so long, mm. and then you you, and know, you receive some information about them, and you have to talk to them about it. And it's wow. something that's that's surprising to you. And and you know mm. yeah. you you have to you have to maintain your composure, and not and not go not approach it from a personal angle. Mm. Um, but as I started questioning him and he started realizing what it was about, um, he started having that that physical mm. reaction that was so severe that it, it frightened me. Not a physical reaction, like a violent type reaction, right. not at all, but just his body started reacting. And I was concerned about his medical... Um, well state. Being, wow. Yes. Because it's so overwhelming it for him. It was so overwhelming that he started shaking yeah. violently. And um, so that was one of those times where it was absolutely about silence, just letting him collect for a moment, not continuing, not pushing for, right. for more information, mm. making sure he was okay, um, you know, giving him water to drink and letting him compose himself. Mm. And, and he did. And it was it wasn't anything that needed any kind of care or attention from yeah, no medical care. Uh, yes, but it was it was it was it was frightening. I was I was wow. worried and scared. Wow. So that's probably um, that's the there. most severe um, reaction that I that I've experienced with someone that I've talked with. Um, some others and that sorry mm-hmm. that that you having to kind of bracket the the personal like your own personal reactions mm-hmm. to what had happened mm-hmm. was there anything is there anything that you found helpful in that and having a difficult conversation of like i have all of this going on this confusion this anger this sadness this whatever but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to put that here mm-hmm. over here for the for the well-being of this person's conversation is there mm-hmm. any is, is that is that kind of also a skill or is that a mindset is that anything else with with that i think you um you can you can incorporate your relationship with that person into the conversation if um, if it isn't going to give them any sort of advantage, I, I would say, mm-hmm. is probably the closest word I can think of to giving a, a true and accurate response. Um, because you do want someone to feel at ease, but... You don't want them to feel so comfortable that they're not going to take it seriously. So um, when you know someone and you have known them for a while, you're more able to do that if mm. you're if you talk to them in a way that is familiar to them, that that is familiar between the two of you. Right. But also keeping the questions as the same questions that you would ask anybody else, and not not letting them have any leniency just because there's somebody that you sure. that you've known. Well, that's, that sounds difficult. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Another um something that went well, I can tell you one because it was me. It was in a, I, I was on the other end, the other side of the conversation where it was a new job and one of the leaders uh, I had I had I had made a decision and and, and carried out this um just a dis- this action and um the the person the leader did not really like how i handled it so 
he called me into his office to let me know. And I, I could sense immediately. I, I, could, I, I knew that this was not mm. going to be <laughs> a great job conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so when he told me, um, I, I really respected that he did tell me. Mm. Kind of like you and your friend, you yeah. were you were appreciative that he had the um, really the courage yeah. and um, and the respect for you yeah. to let you know that this was something that was not ideal. So that's what I I said to him. I thanked him mm. and um, wow. I said that I'm still learning the ropes and this is exactly the feedback that wow. that I need and I appreciate because I won't know unless unless somebody tells me and that was probably um i think a mm. turning point even for us i mean we we are, we weren't off to a bad start or anything but i think that that created a mutual respect oh. for us that lasted mm. the ability to um just respect each other and, and have that humility where yeah. you can accept that maybe you do things <laughs> wrong too sometimes yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah blind spots yeah <laughs> yes that's amazing. Man. <laughs> Just going through my mind, like some of the, like one of the words that came up, yeah, I went, I went, ba I went base jumping and I found everything that was in the recesses of my, of my brain. So well, I'm, I'm back. Um, <laughs> I, I, fa I found, I found a lot of things there actually. Um, but one of them was kind of like this, like the ethos, like you, you have like your, like your, your place of like com composure and being anchored and kind of like your, your credibility in a conversation and like not losing that to being um, yeah, overly emotional or getting sidetracked or being too um, like soft in a conversation or being too direct and like having to be right. But like this really good place of ethos of like we can have hard conversations and I'm going to be okay. And, and I'm also having it in a way that you're going to be okay, mm -hmm. like to physical reactions, to um, you know, not feeling accused, overwhelmed, but I'm mm -hmm. also not going to not bring up the hard things either. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. This is a really really cool place to to aim to be in a conversation mm -hmm. and then um but my my mind goes to times when like I, like i've not had that either either I, i've gone in needing to be right or i've gone in and notice a person starts to feel really uncomfortable or mm -hmm. and then i'm like well maybe i should back out a little bit and mm -hmm. but standing that place yeah, of abort, abort. yeah right <laughs> right standing standing the place of like mm -hmm. hey it's i i can communicate in a way that's we're going to like leave this conversation better than we came in and we're going to talk about hard things, but we're going to do it in a way that you still feel valued and honored. Mm -hmm. That is like such a skill, man. That is. Yeah. I mean, really it's like just the basic human for formation it of is. like acting like Jesus. Right. Right. And being more like him. Like when she talks about empathy and humility, like, mm -hmm. I mean, so, those are there. Um, and truth and those, still. And to like, mm -hmm. to even like tie it all back in, like we're talking about some heavy, like human formation, foundational things. So sometimes it's easy to, not incorporate the 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 religious aspect or just like how our faith factors into it but i mean treating the person as a beloved son or daughter mm -hmm. of god you know is dignity. like the and with dignity mm -hmm. is the is the goal behind all of these like key skills mm -hmm. that we're mm -hmm. that we're looking for and, mm -hmm. and having these conversations mm -hmm. um and if we can like view people when we're in difficult conversations, the easiest thing for me has been to like, and someone said this once, I don't remember, like it was some election year. I was like 14 years old or something like that. I was like real, I was so into politics when I was 14. Like I was, I was working at the Capitol. I was figuring really? things out. I was, I was all over the place. And wow. um, so like I would just, I would live to have a, tough conversations, you know, and debate people about mm. public policy and other nonsense like that. And, <laughs> but it just got to the point where like having those conversations like became more and more fruitless and people were like, mm. why are we talking about this? Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, and would like communicate Whoa. it to me. And eventually, I don't, I don't even remember who it was at this point, but I remember this happening in high school where someone says, Jace, do you not understand that that person who disagrees with you on this is the prize? Is infinitely valued and like is a person and you can villainize you know someone who has a different ideology or is hurting your work or your productivity or mm. being a being a nag on your team or whatever it is um 
but just like that reorientation of they're the prize is something that's been infinitely helpful right. to me mm-hmm. entering into those types of conversations because it's like oh this is you know even though this person may be causing a problem they themselves are not a problem right mm-hmm. you know yeah. mm-hmm. and that's that's a a really hard thing to do in the moment sometimes especially if it like comes out of nowhere and we're in our brain is in that soup of uh soup of chemicals that are telling us to freak out Mm -hmm. um but yeah that's my favorite that's my the best advice that i've had going into those conversations Mm -hmm. that they are a prize even Mm -hmm. if you know the move is to not be on your team anymore to not be roommates anymore or whatever it is um Mm -hmm. you know but that's Mm -hmm. really real Rhonda, did you have any other you know last thoughts as we wind it down and land the plane of like if there was if there is something that you wanted to like really highlight for somebody as they're Mm -hmm. maybe they're Maybe they're thinking about talking to their, you know, parent, confronting mm-hmm. their parent about a, a problem that they're having, or maybe it's with a son or a daughter, and they're working up the courage to like mm-hmm. enter into that moment. Mm-hmm. What's the last bit of encouragement that you'd give them? I would say um, maybe a few different things rolled in to, to the approach, and one of them being that it's not about the person. It's not. It's not that, like you were saying, it's not the individual themselves that might be um, creating a struggle that you're ha- or that you're that you're having a struggle with. Um, it's the behaviors, focusing on the changes that need to happen in yeah. behavior, um, yeah. and empathy, being able to do your best to try to be. From their in the understanding that they're having, right. what are they hearing? How are they processing it? What is their their heart and their mind thinking, mm. feeling when they hear this from you? Yeah. And try to approach it with the words and the tone that will be um, um, most impactful and received. Yeah. And um, and also that it takes practice. So the first thing that comes to mind when you say that, and I know we're finishing up is most people would probably have, or at least I would have like a, a fear of like, if I go into this conversation and I'm wanting to say these things, but then I listen, what if I'm, what if I end up listening and then I don't, I don't say the things right. Like where the person doesn't end up listening back to these points that we need to talk about. Mm-hmm. But would you say that when you enter in and you really are seeking to listen, that the person in turn will end up listening better to what you have mm-hmm. to say as well. That, oh, that's, absolutely. That's the case. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes, they become, they trust you. They, they become more open to um, yeah. sharing because they know that you're there as someone that just wants the best for them too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's good well, stuff. That's, that's great stuff. Rhonda, thank you so much for thank being you. with us today. We've been Red Dirt Catholics, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> Thank you.